What's up friends, Chris Nelson here bringing you another real estate related video, but this week we're talking about realtors. That's right, people like me. And we're talking about things that actually can get real estate agents in trouble if they're not aware. But before we dive into that a little bit of house cleaning, this channel is all about real estate advice, tips, and tech. So if any of that excites you, you're in the right place. But do me a favor, drop me a comment, hit that thumbs up, consider subscribing and mash that bell so that you're notified of my future content. So as mentioned this week, we're gonna talk a little bit about things that could get a licensed realtor in trouble. And these things aren't in any particular order. We're just gonna go through them and we're probably going to move quick because some of these things are self-explanatory and don't need a lot of explanation but I will unpack a few of these things as we move through them. So here we go. One thing that could get a realtor in trouble is if they were to give out a combination to a house and let a buyer tour a house without them being present, or even if they let someone else accompany that buyer who was not a licensed realtor, well, that could land a realtor in the hot seat and potentially lead to fines because that is something that we're not allowed to do. Now, even though the real estate market in Pennsylvania is hot and homes are selling record fast and buyers are making multiple offers and losing out, we as licensed realtors are not allowed to educate or convince a buyer to make multiple offers on multiple properties at once. If a buyer intends to buy one home, then we can only allow them to make one offer on one property at any given time. So buyers, I know that this is something that you think about often because you want to make sure that you are as competitive as possible, but as a licensed realtor, I cannot allow for you to make more than one offer at any given time unless you're an investor and looking to buy multiple properties at any given time. Now, believe it or not, I cannot give a buyer the terms to offer. Quite often a buyer wants for me to give them the amount that they should offer or what terms or contingencies that they should put in their offer or maybe even leave out. Now, the most that a realtor can do is help you understand the comps in the area and maybe help you decide what you think is a reasonable offer, but a realtor should not be giving you the amount to offer. But to add to that, when it comes to value, if I give you a number to offer and you lose the property, well then you might think in the back of your mind, Chris advised me, Chris gave me the number, and it's Chris's fault that we didn't get our offer accepted. And then if your offer is accepted in the back of your mind, you are also wondering whether or not Chris had you overpay for a property. You may be thinking in the back of your mind that you were comfortable offering X, yet because I guided you, you went with Y. So ultimately I cannot give you or suggest a sale price but I can help you understand and ultimately help you make sure you're making a savvy decision. Now this one continues to grow and grow, but anything that violates fair housing. Now I have a lot of friends who are just across the border up north in Canada, and ironically there are a lot of differences when it comes to how they can market homes there versus how we can market homes here. And again, a lot of this has to do with fair housing. Now, obviously there are things that we know we can't and should not do. Discriminate for race, religion, creed, any of those things, okay? But what we also are not allowed to do is let's just take into consideration a large fenced in yard. It would be unethical for me to say that this is a perfect yard for a family because it may also be perfect for someone who does not have a family. Or it may even be considered unethical to say that this is a phenomenal community to raise kids because again, not everyone has children. It could be considered a violation against fair housing. So there are a lot of things that fall under the fair housing umbrella, but they can definitely get me and or other realtors in trouble if they're not aware of those guidelines. Now this one is pretty big on my radar because I, in my experience, I think a lot of realtors are losing leverage for their clients when they go into giving up what their motivation may be. What I mean by that is, if I'm representing a seller and someone calls me and says, hey Chris, why is your seller selling? That is a loaded question which ultimately could result in us losing some leverage. Let me unpack that a little bit more. If I were to say, well, 
my clients need to relocate for work or they are separating or any of these laundry list reasons that people move, well, ultimately that could result in blood in the water, uh, relocating for a job or separating from a spouse usually says to the other side that there is some urgency. This seller does not want to sell, they have to sell. And by me disclosing that, well, I could get in some trouble if my clients were to find out because by doing so, um, literally, I've just taken a lot of their leverage away from them without them even knowing. Now, most lawsuits or issues in real estate stem around disclosure. And it's not always about the seller not disclosing something. A lot of times it boils down to the realtor not disclosing something. This is something that ultimately every realtor should be aware of and transparent throughout the process, regardless if it costs you a transaction. But lack of disclosure not only could result in hefty fines, is probably one of the easiest ways for a realtor to lose their license in this industry. So across the board, not only from a seller perspective and a buyer perspective, because they do need to disclose their financial situation to you on their BFI document, but it is also major for a realtor to not be transparent and disclose something that they are aware of or have become aware of, maybe through conversation with a seller or a neighbor. Now, although I may not want to communicate, communication or lack thereof is something else that could land me in some hot water. It is part of my fiduciary responsibility to return phone calls, emails, and so forth, whether it be with someone I'm doing a transaction with or even a potential buyer for one of my properties or a seller asking questions. I need to make sure that I am calling people back even if I can't provide a service because, well, someone could say that I didn't call them back and that could very well be looked at as discrimination. So it is very important that I make sure and other realtors make sure that we are responding to any and all inquiries as well as any and all questions that get posed during the real estate transaction. Now, obviously you've been watching my videos and you know that, well, real estate and everything related to it is in my expertise. Definitely lying there. However, a majority of things I am familiar with, but I should not be, nor should any other realtor be operating out of their expertise. Commercial real estate is something that I know on the surface, but it's not something that I know in and out. So therefore, maybe it's not in my best interest to take a commercial listing. I'm also not very familiar with mobile home sales. The same thing could be said about plots or burial locations because you may not know it, but in order to sell those, you must possess a valid real estate license as well. So operating out of your expertise definitely could get you in trouble. And last but not least, this one's minor, but believe it or not, it actually is considered unethical for me to have direct communication with anybody else's client. So my client would communicate directly with me and anything that needs to be conveyed to the other end or other side of the transaction would have to be conveyed to the other cooperating realtor. I cannot go directly to someone else's buyer or seller to convey any terms because again, well, all communication has to go through the licensees and by communicating directly with someone else's clients could result in fines. So, so there you have it. There are a few things that you may not be aware of that realtors could be in trouble over if they're not paying attention. So, but do me a favor, let me know. Is there something that I overlooked? Is there something that maybe you or your realtor got in trouble over? Let me know. With all of that being said, tune in next week for the very next Just a Tip Tuesday with Chris. Until then, take care.